So the last set of decisions for your Globus this week is going to be your finance and cash flow screen. Uh, hold on while I move myself over to the other side of this video, okay? So you've got capital structure decisions. Now we've made decisions about expanding our factory, about marketing our product, about how we do things, and that has left us with a negative cash balance at the end of year six if we don't do anything about our capital structure. So obviously we would probably want to take out a loan in order to cover that cash shortfall. Now, you remember when we were making the decision about compensation and facilities, we told Globus that we were going to take out a 10 year loan and finance 75% of those capital expenditures. If you look at your finance and cash flow screens, it shows you that you've got new workstations, 8.5 million, robotics upgrade, 66 million, facilities expansion, 14 million, and then facilities improvement, that's 5.5 million, and that actually comes from our corporate citizenship where we spent 2.5 million and 3 million respectively, okay? So you can see there's justification for us taking out a 10-year loan to cover our cash shortfall. However, we need to consider the overall structure of our business. And you constantly need to be trying to lower your weighted average cost of capital. Now, hopefully you remember this from business finance. If not, hopefully you've got a finance major on your team. There's an old adage in finance that says, debt is always cheaper than equity, okay? So here's proof of that. If you want to take out a 10-year loan, it costs you 6.5% interest, okay? Your stockholders have an expectation of a 17.5% return on equity. So which of those is going to be cheaper? Obviously, debt is cheaper than equity, okay? So since our shareholders have an expectation of 17.5% return on their equity, we can actually purchase back 200,000 shares of stock this year, okay? What we're doing when we make that decision is we're reducing the number of shares of stock out, outstanding, and since we're going to replace that stock repurchase with long-term debt, we're actually lowering our weighted average cost of capital. Now the 200,000 shares of stock that we repurchase, that causes the price of our stock to go up. At the end of year five, if you'll recall from your Globus Participants Guide, your stock was trading at $12 per share, okay? You've got 20 million shares outstanding, and if we're buying back 200,000 shares of stock, that's 1% of our outstanding stock. So because we're buying back 1% of our outstanding stock, we get an increase of 1% in our stock price. So you see that in the repurchase, right? We're buying back 200,000 shares and it's costing us $12.12 .12 per share. You can also see it down here under your cash outflows, stock repurchases 200,000 shares at 1212 .12 is 2.424 million, okay? Now remember, it's not just capital appreciation that pays our shareholders. Our shareholders have owned stock in our company for as many as five years, and they've never received a dividend. And I, for one, believe that shareholders have an expectation that they're not only going to have capital appreciation, but they're also going to have income. So we need to pay a dividend on our earnings. Our business is projected to make $58 million, 58320000 to be exact, in net profit. So can we afford to pay something back to our shareholders? Sure. Now you decide what your dividend structure is going to look like. You decide based on the industry expectations and whatever strategy and policy you set. But I'm going to start with maybe a 50 cents per share dividend. If we do a 50 cent per share dividend, remember we've reduced our number of shares to 19.8 million. So it's going to cost us $9.9 .9 million in dividends. Is that reasonable? I think if we've got a $60 million profit, returning $10 million to our shareholders is probably reasonable, okay? In addition, we need to take a look at our existing debt. Your company has three loans. Loan two and loan three are the most recent loan, loans that were taken. One of those was for $16 million. One was for $64 million. And both of those are at 
The $16 million loan, we can repay that. The $84 million loan, we can repay that. And obviously that leaves us with a pretty big cash shortfall, right? We're refinancing debt. We're securing some, we're purchasing some fixed assets. We're changing our capital structure. So we're going to use long-term debt in order to do that. If I put in a long-term debt, a long-term loan of $145 million for 10 years at 6.5% interest, we have lowered our weighted average cost of capital. And the way that we've done that is think about what we're replacing here. 8.5%, 8.5%, 17.5% is our investors' expectations for ROE. And we've reduced that cost to 6.5%, okay? So you can make capital structure decisions and those capital structure decisions will give you a credit rating for your company. Largely your credit rating is going to be based upon your debt equity ratio, your interest coverage ratio, and your current ratio, which are all emphasized down here. Your projections are emphasized here. So even though we're borrowing $145 million, our debt equity ratio projected for year six is actually better than it was for year five. Our interest coverage ratio, because we're reducing some expensive interest that we had at eight and a half to six and a half, and we're changing the terms on those loans by going with a longer term loan, our interest coverage ratio goes from 2.73 to 9.18. Our current ratio goes up from 1.42 to 1.56. Now, if you'll recall, I gave you a lecture last week about heuristics, and I said heuristics are simply a rule of thumb, and they depend upon the industry, and they depend on your company policy. One of the heuristics or the rules of thumb that I mentioned was your current ratio, and I said for all industries, all companies, your current ratio should be in the neighborhood of about 2 to 1. Okay, that really doesn't apply in Globus because you do not hold finished goods inventory in your company. If you'll recall, finished goods inventory is a current asset. And since we're not holding finished goods inventory, that means we have fewer current assets, which is the numerator of the fraction for your current ratio. It's current assets divided by current liabilities. So we could expect our current ratio to come in below that 2.0. Okay. So you set the heuristic for what you want your current ratio to be, okay? So that's it for finance and cash flow. I know you guys feel like you're drinking from a fire hose, and this is a tremendous amount of information. Here's what I want you to do. Simply get cover comfortable with the software over these next couple of weeks. Get comfortable with it. Make some decisions. They're not going to be the same decisions that you make when the data resets, okay? But understand that this is an iterative process. Every time that you make a decision, something else is affected. So you probably remember Newton's third law that says for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Well, actually, that's a gross oversimplification because every action has multiple opposite reactions and maybe some reactions actually that go the same way. They're not opposite. So. You need to understand that your decision-making process is very iterative. In other words, you're going to go through multiple iterations of making your decisions. And what you want to do is you want to optimize your resources the very best that you possibly can. Again, those resources are land, labor, and capital. You want to lower your weighted average cost of capital, and you want to take a balanced stakeholder approach to make sure that all of the people who have a vested interest in your company are satisfied, okay? So that's going to be it. Good luck with your practice decisions on Tuesday. I'm going to be available to answer questions if you have any. So shoot me a text or an email and I'll be happy to help.